The main problem with State of Decay 2, yes, we're finally going to address this subject directly. And the reason I haven't immediately tackled it is because it's a very complex issue. It's the game progression. And whatever analogy you want to use, it's the bedrock of the game, the skeleton of the game, the soul of the game, the, the blueprint of the game. This is a very, very important subject. And many of the videos I've made, like the damage discussion, the blood plague discussion, the idea of uh, adding in the night terror, many of them are already either questions to this video, like what are the problems with game progression, and many of them are answers of how do you fix the game progression. Many of those videos are already answers to this, and that just shows you how complex this subject is. In fact, many community members, I don't think they're associating their complaints with the game with the game progression. Like when people say like they want more complex interactions between the different characters, when they say like they want to build more extensive bases, those are all problems. I agree. Like I'm not going to take it away from them, but really what they're saying is that the game is too basic. It's too shallow. The progression of the game is too simple. It needs to be stronger. So Everyone's complaints are really components of this issue right here. And so, yeah, what we're talking about is an issue of complexity. And that's why it has to be covered in multiple videos. There's just no way I can cover it in a single one. I mean, unless you want it to be like a, like a 24-hour long video or something silly like that. So the problem with game progression is that it is a pervasive issue in State of Decay. It's been a problem in State of Decay 1. It's still a problem in State of Decay 2. And there's no reason it won't be a problem in State of Decay 3. But that brings up the first issue. What is progression and why is it a problem? And I will go ahead and define progression in my own words as the escalating path of both difficulty and complexity in the game leading to some logical conclusion. And Another way to say that is that when you start a game, typically it starts out kind of easy, lets you kind of get the hang of it, and the farther you go in the game, it gets harder, both in the sense that the threats in the game grow in difficulty, but also the game throws more information at you, there's more to learn, there's more decisions to make, and the more decisions there are, the more of an opportunity to make bad decisions exist, and then... Typically, it culminates into something where you combine everything you've learned, the, the most challenging threats in the game exist, and now to overcome this kind of ultimate threat or finally overcome some kind of persistent threat that's been plaguing you since the beginning of the game, you combine everything you know, and that is kind of the end game experience where everything that you've learned comes to a head and you finally show this is what I've learned, this is what I can do, and you either overcome the super ultimate threat or you finally surpass the constant threat that has been troubling you from the very get-go in the game. Now, when thinking about progression, there's always two things that come to mind. It's the three stages of the game and the four X's. The three stages of a game are the early game, the mid game, and the end game. You could argue that maybe there's more stages of the game. Maybe there's a pre-game, there's like a post-game, an after game. But let's just keep it simple and say there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Because it's true of so many things. There's a beginning to life, a midlife, and an end to life. There's a beginning to the book, a, an end to a book. There's a, a beginning, a middle, and end to a book. Everything, you know, it's just a simple way to understand it. And then there's the four X's. The four X's come from, well, a genre of video games known as the four X genre. And that'd be games like Civilization, uh, Stellaris, uh, even games like Total War, typically grand strategy games. But they apply to pretty much all video games. And what the four X's are, are explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. And those fit into the three stages, typically... The early game is about exploring. The mid game is about expansion and exploitation of the game mechanics. And then the end game is extermination or basically execution of your grand scheme where you show everything you've learned to overcome some kind of final threat, which is why it's going to be useful to think about these things as we talk about the problem with progression in State of Decay 3. Now, the issue with progression in State of Decay 3 is that the game it gets weaker as it goes on. It doesn't get weak immediately, but 
the game starts out good and it just gets a bit weaker, a bit less fun as you go. And then it just kind of, bam, drops. You reach this point where you've basically done the most important things in State of Decay. And, and then you realize there's no end game. Because in State of Decay, the end game is survival. That's ultimately the goal. Your goal is to find the ultimate way to survive. And it's not that difficult to do. So in the early game, you're just trying to get the feel of the game. You're just exploring. You're just trying to live another day. The mid game is about building. And then the end game is ultimately supposed to be about you finally overcoming this problem of survivability. But in State of Decay, it's too easy to do that. So let's talk about the different stages of the game and how it's good and how it's bad. And like I said, every one of these game stages could easily be their own video, both the problems and the solutions. And the the reason we're talking about this, like who even cares about any of this is that, as I said, it's a pervasive issue. There are a lot of consequences to not having a good game progression. The chief problem is replayability. People get bored of the game faster than they should because the game, it's too short. Even in, the, even in a game that technically goes on and on and on forever, you reach the point where you've done the most meaningful things too quickly. And you master the survival of the game too quickly. And like I said, this is a pervasive issue. It was in State of Decay 1, it's in State of Decay 2, and there's no reason it won't be in State of Decay 3. That's why this is a relevant conversation. Anyways, let's talk about the early game. Now, to me, I would absolutely tell you the early game is the best part of State of Decay 3, and that's because your interactivity with the game and your decisions, they matter the most in the very beginning of the game. Every single thing that you loot, you find snacks, you find like a metal pipe, you find your first gun, you find rucksacks. Everything that you find in this kind of exploration of the game is meaningful, it's impactful, and just living to the next day feels like you accomplished something. And that's what I mean by the, the beginning of State of Decay is really its strongest point. It's also where there is a much more organic progression through the game mechanics. Like I said, you find your lead pipe, and then later on you'll find a wooden bat, or maybe you'll find like a metal bat, and you're just upgrading from really crappy weapons in the beginning, and then finding slightly better weapons and ultimately, you'll find like, you know, like the, 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 the fireman chief's crowbar. You, you'll find just some kind of really cool weapon eventually that'll become a really like a, a weapon that you use for a long time. Or you'll find like cool mods. You know, you loot the gun store, you find cool guns, you find an ammo press. This beginning phase of the game is where everything is just, ooh, cool. Ooh, that's awesome that I found. Or, oh, God, like, how do I deal with this enemy? Or, oh, God, is a juggernaut. Do I even have the tools to kill it? Everything is more meaningful and impactful in the beginning of the game, which is why, like I said, I love restarting playthroughs in State of Decay. But not all news is good. Unfortunately, there are things that weaken the early game experience. And all it's largely... Undead Labs doing in the additions of the game. And the first issue is that they just add in DLCs that ruin the early game. They add in like ease, easily accessible vehicle call-ins. They add in things like the Pyro Launcher, Scent Block, Red Talon Facilities. They just add in these like super OP things that make it so that the cool things you find aren't cool anymore. Another example, the Bounty Broker items, like that lead pipe that you're just glad to have because in the beginning of the game, you're like, oh God, I don't even have enough parts to repair my current weapon. So thank God I found this lead pipe so that if my first weapon breaks, I've got another weapon to fall back on. Well, who cares? Well, you can just get a bilge rat shovel from the bounty broker. These weapons that Undead Labs, they think they're so cool, like these things that they're adding into the game when... And the funny thing is, like, people will criticize them that, oh, they're, they're adding all these, like, unimportant weapons. And for some, for a lot of the weapons, they are unimportant, like the, um, the wood grain AK-47. That's not a very important weapon. But they do add weapons that are so strong that they invalidate the item progression 
and finding and discovering cool things in the beginning of the game when you could just get these ultra strong weapons from DLCs or from the bounty broker. And that that does damage the experience. That does damage core systems in the game. Like I talked about in the craftsmanship, the, the video about the problems with craftsmanship. What good is metalworking? a skill all about making high-quality weapons, when well, you could just get better weapons from DLC. Like, you're undermining the dra like the core elements of your game, the skills and the natural progression of crappy weapons to, like, okay-ish weapons to decent weapons to, like, rare weapons that you complete from doing quests from other survivors or weapons that you build from the metalworking skill, those are supposed to be the most important things in the game because th those are the foundational, that's the skeleton of your game. Not these, these easy-to-get, game-breaking DLC things. So that's another issue. Another problem is that even before they added in DLC, Undead Labs was adding new mechanics into State of Decay and then undermining their own mechanics. So they added in water and power, but then they added in the Builder's Legacy, the Amenities boon, which deletes those mechanics out of the game. And this affects every stage of the game. You get water and power in the early game, in the mid game, in the end game, and now that means it just removes interactivity with all of the utilities facilities, all of the bases that come with like with a built-in water or power facility, those are wastes now. All of the 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 utility skill loses so much value because of the amenities boot. So they add in things that destroy their own game and make their own game less replayable. So how do you fix this? Well, one way is just to remove all those things, but that's obviously that's not going to happen. So in the next game, don't add those in. Probably not going to happen because Undead Labs seem to think that adding in little weapons seems to be like a really good idea, even though either A, they're just cosmetic, or B, they damage the game by adding in excessively powerful items. Even if they added mid-quality items that were just easy to get because of the bounty broker, that would still interfere with the game because you would just skip to the mid-quality items and you wouldn't have to like, oh, cool, got a lead pipe. Oh, cool, found like some crappy 22 caliber pistol. You would just skip through those to like the mid-quality bounty broker weapons. But those just shouldn't exist. They're bad ideas. But another way to do this, if we want to have it for the people who do like it, is maybe add in an Iron Man mode. And this Iron Man mode is going to be designed to be kind of the way State of Decay was like intended to be played from a balanced perspective. No DLC, no legacies, no bounty broker, and make it so that you can't unlock achievements unless you're on this Iron Man mode, so there's actually some kind of weight and consequence to it. It drives people nuts when you do that. Like Stellaris does that, for example. If you're not playing an Iron Man mode in Stellaris, you can't unlock any achievements. Drives people nuts, but it drives home the point that Iron Man mode is the way the game was balanced and designed to be played. And, uh, you know, some people will talk about how just don't use these things. Hey, if the pyro launcher bothers you, don't use it. And I think that is not the proper way of thinking in specifically a survival game. Because a survival game is about using every single advantage that you've got to claw your way to another day. So when you add in these things that are just super strong, there's this cognitive dissonance where you're like, oh, I'm in a survival game. I'm supposed to be using every trick in the book to live. But now, in order to actually have a fun experience, I'm supposed to not partake in a large quantity of game-breaking DLC. It, it's like it's a struggle in the mind of the player to do that because you're, you're in the mindset that you're supposed to be playing a game that's so challenging that these DLCs would fit into the game. The game should be hard enough that the pyro launcher fits in. The game should be hard enough that the pre-order bonuses like the grass cutter fit into the game. But they don't. They just like obliterate the game. And I just don't think that's a reasonable thing to ask of the typical player to like restrain themselves in a survival game from these advantages. So that's the state of early game in State of Decay. Let's move on to the mid game. The mid game is the expand and exploit stage. And in regards to State of Decay, 
that's basically the part of the game where you're ready to build up your base, probably your dream base. And it's the part where, you know, you're setting up your outpost, you're just grabbing a ton of loot in order to, like, build up this base. And this stage of the game, I still think it's fun. I don't think it's as good as the early game, but it's kind of the beginning of the end. That's really how I view the mid-game, because... The whole goal here is to build your base. And the problem with this is that it's too easy to build a base that's sustainable. And the reason that's a problem is because once you've made a sustainable base, well, you've basically beaten State of Decay. Because the core problem of State of Decay, it's in, it's in the original tagline. When State of Decay first came out, their tagline was, how will you survive? That's the end game objective, is finding a way to survive. And well, it turns out that's not very hard to do, and you complete it by the mid game. The mid game is where you will make your dream base that's fully sustainable, and it doesn't matter. Like people, oh, I've been living in the game for like 200 or 500 or a bajillion days. Well, honestly, after about day 20, there's not a whole lot of difference. There's not much difference between day 20 to day 30. And certainly once you get to day 30, I wouldn't say there's any difference. Day 30 of Nightmare Zone is no different than day 50 of Nightmare Zone. And that's no different than day 100. And that's no different than day 1000. There's no difference. The game does not get any harder. It gets easier because you've maxed out your base. You're fully sustainable. You've got all these super strong characters. The game can only get easier, and it's not hard to build your base. And this is really the heart of the issue with the mid-game, and therefore the heart of the issue with State of Decay itself. So how hard is it to build a base? Well, to get to the biggest base, you need eight people and 3,500 influence. That's not hard to do. Just recruit every single person you find. Bam, you've got eight people. So now you can move into the biggest base. But what about sustainability? Eight people, they've got mouths to feed. Well, how do you make a sustainable base? Well, one, get some materials. Just throw the materials at it to build up your base. That's not really hard to do. Materials, they come in groups of five. And materials are one of the two most common bulk resources. The other one being food. They're just materials. It's everywhere in the base. Building the base in terms of needing materials, that's not hard. What about sustainability? Oh, you've got eight people, mouths to feed. You just need a garden. A garden is available at the very beginning of the game. And yes, to reach its full potential, you do need a gardener, but you can start the game with a gardener. Gardening, it's its one of the, I would say it's more common than average amongst the skills that you could just find organically. You can find books on it if you've got the trader leader. You can build the trade depot and you could call in a food merchant. And the food merchant typically has a book on gardening. So it's not hard to get somebody with gardening. It's not hard to replace somebody with gardening. And the other thing the garden needs is water. But hey, you've got amenities there you go. Just get the builder's legacy going and bam, you've got everything you need. And once you do that, once you have that set up and it's not hard to set up, that's the, the rest in peace, food sustainability. You're done. What about, oh no, you're losing so many materials from the buildings you're constructing? Well, build a staging area. All that needs is an empty, large facility. It doesn't have any other requirements and bam, there goes all of your material upkeep. Well, you need healing now. And that's another thing you need to be sustainable. Well, you don't even need medicine to get the level two infirmary. And the level two infirmary heals people. The only thing you need a level three infirmary for is just to overkill the game with the strong painkiller combo. But bam, just get the level two infirmary. That heals people. Don't You don't need level three and you don't need the uh, the super hospital. Not needed. You don't need that for sustainability. What about the workshop? You need that to repair your weapons. Well, the workshop repairs weapons at level one, and you probably need it for building repair kits, and you need all you need is level two, and you need a mechanic in order to actually uh, build the the repair kits themselves. And mechanics can be a little bit harder to find, but there is an entire themed enclave of mechanics, and you can just start the game with a mechanic. You can start the game with a gardener, with a mechanic, and with medicine. So bam, you can just have all of those things. And after that, boom, sustainability done. You know, like maybe you need a little bit of ammo. You need a little bit of um, medicine. Build the build outposts. You, you don't even need all six outposts. You could be sustainable. If you just built that, don't even fill up the other facilities. You're, you're sustainable. You're done. You're not losing resources. You don't need to loot anymore. You're, you're basically done. You've got, you've basically accomplished the main goal of State of Decay of 
surviving. How will you survive? By doing what I just said right there. It's not that hard to do. Once you get from that point, everything is a bonus. And that's the issue with the mid game. The mid game seems complicated because when you go to build your base, oh my God, there's all these options. There's like all of the leader buildings. There's like the shooting range. There's like the dojo. There's like the, the different power generators and the crafting still. Those are all just fluff. You don't need any of that. Like you can add it in if you want, but you don't need any of that to survive. That does not, the tagline, how will you survive? You don't need any of that. That's all just a bonus. It is the icing on the cake. It's not the cake itself. And that's the problem with the mid game. It's too easy. It's too easy to get a base that's sustainable. And once you do that, the game is essentially done. So how do we fix the mid game? Well, once again, Bring in that Iron Man mode. In the Iron Man mode, no legacies. That means that you have to get water and power in the game, not by just pushing a button and saying you've got, oh, I've got amenities, therefore water and power done. So that makes water and power more impactful. That makes all of the buildings that require water and power more interesting. It also makes gasoline more interesting since using gas-powered sources for water and power are very common. It just makes the game that much more interactive. Another problem is that the bases are too small. The bases need to be bigger. Some of the biggest bases in the game, they, they still, like, there's hardly any room to build anything. Once you plop in the essential buildings, that would be like the garden, the workshop, the infirmary, and then you build the OP things, you know, build in your trade depot, your sniper tower, you know, maybe you got room for a staging area. Once you build like the OP buildings, there, but what is there room for left? There's hardly any building space left for interesting and creative things. Like you want a shooting range or a dojo or like a kitchen or something. There's just no room for them. So even if you wanted a cool base with all these fancy things in it, the, the really powerful facilities and the essential facilities, they fill up either 100% of the base to the point where you can't fill all of the facilities with the really good stuff. Or they fill up the majority of the base. There's just no more room for creativity, and that reduces replayability. So one idea would be to let let you just make freestanding bases more like Grounded or Subnautica, where you can make bases as big as you want. That's definitely not a State of Decay 2 thing. Probably won't even be a State of Decay 3 thing, but that would be one of the ways to make the mid-game a lot more interesting. Another thing is to add in double-edged solutions. It's too easy to get just complete solutions. Like the garden is a complete solution. Like that's the end of food sustainability once, or food sustainability problems once you build the garden. What you need are options in the mid game that are not perfect. And a good example of this would be make it so that when you build a power generator, one, there's no, there's no such thing. Remove amenities. And now you have to build a power generator and make it a noisy gas power generator. And it makes your community aggravated because they got to hear this dumb motor running all the time. And you're constantly being attacked by zombies because they're attracted to the noise and it's stressing out your community because they're just constantly dealing with these zombie seizures. And it's a drain on morale. And so basically, you've solved the problem of electricity, but now you have the serious problem. Make it, it's a serious threat to morale. So you fixed one problem, but now you've got another problem. You should always be in a state of decay. Your proverbial ship should always be springing new leaks where water is filling up in the ship. And every time you plug one leak up, another leak shows up. That's what makes these kinds of survival games interesting. You should not be able to just get these perfect sustainability answers so easily in the game. Another example is, you know, maybe you build a ton of gardens. One, make it so that you need to build more gardens to fully feed the community. But if you're building a ton of food, it attracts unwanted attention. Like you get raiders who want to raid your base or you get like beggars who are like, give us food, please. We suck and we need food. And if you tell them, no, go away. You know, uh, it causes other people in your community to be like, no, we need to be helping people. Like, w you know, we have all these advantages. We should be helping. And it should cause, like, struggles. It should cause moral dilemmas within your community. That's what I mean. It's a double-edged sword. Like, it doesn't just instantly create this this solution that's just, bam, there it goes. You just, you just locked away this 
major problem in the game. Like if you thought like, what would the zombie apocalypse be like? Well, food would be a problem. And when you're just able to just wipe away the problem so easily, that that just that's just a problem to the game's replayability. And so that I think is the main issue with the mid game. Once again, I want to reiterate this idea that, like I said, every stage of the game could deserve its own video. So if I'm not going super deep into each stage of the game, that's why I don't want this video to be like a bajillion years long. Anyways, let's talk about the end game. This would be the extermination stage of the 4X. This is where you have finally amassed your resources and you're ready to tackle the main threat of the game, be it the final level, the ultimate big bad, the super enemy, or maybe it's the stage where you're finally ready to reach sustainability. This problem that has been plaguing you since the beginning of the game, you are finally ready to do some kind of dangerous set of things that will let you reach sustainability. That's supposed to be the end game. And let me tell you, it's not legacy missions, it's State of Decay. Even though that's what beats the game, quote unquote, those are not the end game. The reason you're doing the legacies is to unlock the boons to use in a long term playthrough or to save the characters to deploy them on a harder playthrough. So the legacy missions, they're not the end game, not in the not in the slightest bit. And so that's where I get this argument that State of Decay doesn't really have an end game because the, the ultimate goal in State of Decay is how will you survive? And you've done it by the end of the mid game by building your base. You've already answered the question of how you'll survive. You'll just build a garden. You'll build a staging area. You'll build an infirmary and a workshop. Bam, that's how you survive. Game over. You've done it. So what do you do after you've done that? Well, you're basically just scraping the barrel, bottom of the barrel for just miscellaneous things to do because the game isn't growing in complexity or difficulty. Like day 50 of Nightmare Zone is not different than day 100. You, you've beaten the game. So what do you do? I don't know, like retrain character skills to get like the optimal combo, but, but you're not really doing it. You've already... You've already demonstrated that you can dominate the game without it. So you're just doing it for fun, collecting all the weapons and getting a bunch of vehicles. You've already proven that you don't need all those weapons. You don't need the Eternal Guards, Infinite Rage. So you're just doing it for fun. You're just kind of doing these miscellaneous things. You're doing bounties. You're recruiting a bunch of characters to find the prettiest characters or the characters with the best skills. Things that you don't need because you've already reached sustainability. You've already, quote unquote, beaten the game. You're just kind of doing after game, post game, just extra credit things. So how do you fix this lack of an end game? And that this is the million dollar question. This deserves multiple videos on its own. And that's where you get this idea of like the night terror. This is where you get the idea of like the blood plague ecosystem. The other videos I've made, those are answers to how do you fix the end game? And therefore fixing the end game is what fixes state of decay. So I've already made videos like just showing you that this is a very complicated subject, but how do we fix the end game? Well, I don't think it can be done for State of Decay to require a complete overhaul of the game mechanics. But the basic concept is some kind of lengthy campaign is necessary. I don't mean a campaign of story missions. I mean a, a campaign where there's some challenge to overcome and it takes your personal planning to figure it out. One of the things you could do is, I don't know, let people build structures. Let them build like a town. Let them show that humanity can come back from the apocalypse and the challenges that would come with trying to bring society back. That would be an end game objective, overcoming these very long term goals. Add in um, a hostile blood plague ecosystem like it takes over entire towns, it spreads, it grows, and it takes like 100 in game days to finally destroy it. You're researching technology. You're just trying to hold it back. You're losing ground for the early and mid game. And then in the end game, you can finally take the fight to it and have this tug of war with the blood plague ecosystem and finally vanquish it. And then maybe then you can build a town, build your own structures and bring humanity back. You see what I mean? The, so the, the early game is about exploring. The mid game is about building up your base and gaining power. Once you've gained power, Power, now you project that power against this dastardly, pervasive blood plague ecosystem that is trying, that is threatening to just 
overthrow the map and give you a game over condition and you needed to explore, expand, and exploit in order to exterminate it and then restore humanity in the post-apocalyptic world by building a towns or something. Like, that would be an end game goal. And even though, yes, you would eventually run out of things to do, you would say, hey, what a satisfying experience. Like, it, it took me a hundred. 200 in-game days to finally overcome this. And sure, all good things came to an end, but you're left feeling, that's fine. I'm fine that this came to an end. There was so much to do. It was so challenging. It was so interesting. There were so many things that I had to learn, experiment, the losses, the victories, that it's okay that it came to an end. That's the way a good end game should be. And that's what I mean. Like I would have to make separate videos entirely just to address this idea of an end game. But you tell me what you think down in the comment section. So let's just quickly recap. I'll tell you without a doubt, the progression is the main problem with State of Decay. And everyone's their calls for other things. They're important. Like people want, they want another map. They want more enemies. They want to build more bases. They want bigger bases. All of these are components of this issue. The idea of needing new enemies. That's the idea of a growing threat. This idea of wanting a bigger base. That's the idea of a growing complexity that people are hungering for in the survival game. That's how you know that the progression is the core problem. The next issue is that Undead Labs add self-defeating mechanics into the game. They add in just OP weapons and facilities that just disrupt the organic flow of the game. They're too easy to do. They, they, they ruin the early game where you're supposed to be excited about every individual thing you find. They added things like the amenities boom that just delete the own mechanics that they've added into the game. They add in weapons that invalidate entire fifth skills like the metalworking skill. The game... It's too simple. You build a base too easily. You obtain sustainability too easily. And because of that, there's no end game. Because the question in State of Decay, how will you survive? The answer is too easy. Garden, workshop, staging era, Shabama Lamazam, you're done. There is no end game. There is no decay in the State of Decay. It's too easy to plug all the holes up in the ship. That's the problem with State of Decay 2. It was the, also, it's also the problem with State of Decay 1. And there's no reason to not believe it won't be the problem with State of Decay 3 unless Undead Labs finds a way to increase the vision of the game and give people the satisfying end game progression, a full great progression from the early game to the mid game to the end game where you explore expand, exploit, and ultimately exterminate. That is how you should survive. And these are some of the ways that I think it should be done. I'll make more videos on the subject as we go. I'll also do more things that you want to hear about in State of Decay 3. You let me know what you think down in the comments section, though. Tell me what you want to see in State of in any State of Decay. It doesn't have to be State of Decay 2. Just in general, what do you think would solve this problem of the weak game progression and just the general lack of an end game. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you don't think this is a problem. Let me know down in the comments section. And I'll make more videos about this subject in the future. Anyways, like this video if it was entertaining. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.